Hey everybody, thanks for being here. This week we're on the Feather River in Northern California for early season, early morning striped bass. Now if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf and this is Angler West Television. Okay, we, we got out here early today so uh, we can find these fish every day. The water's been dropping real hard. We're having un, unforeseen uh, uh, rain this year. It, it won't stop raining in California, so our drought's over. So we get out here super early because now the water went from super high to super low. It's dropping like two foot a day. So we get out here real early before everybody else gets out here, try to find a group of fish. So at first light, when, when the bite really takes off, we'll be on them. So that's the reason why we're here early. In case we make a couple mistakes, we got time to, to find a location where a bunch of fish will be. And fishing artificial lures the way we do, if you don't get on them early and the boats start driving by, they, they, you can't get bit. So we're trying to get out real early, find some fish, and then we'll get on them at first light before all the boats run over the top of them. Once they go over the top of them, they go down, then you gotta use live bait or cut bait or anything besides artificial. So that's the trick is to get out, get away from people, find some fish early, get on them at first light. Now, later on in the year when it gets warm out, we'll be able to go at night when no one's around and be able to fish all night and catch them that way. But this is early season, lots of small male stripers, and uh, they're, they're real spooky this year for some reason. So uh, we're getting out real early this morning. We're trying to find a group of fish and then we're gonna target them at first light. It should be really, really good bites. Dark 30, old black worm. That's why we get out here early to find them. Off we go. About a half ounce weight, seven inch worm, five aught hook, and we can't see nothing. But we know they're out there. Just a nice smooth retrieve. It's real important, people wanna wiggle these. You wanna swim them nice and smooth through the water. You'll feel a little tap. If, you, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're moving your rod in that, it, it's not gonna work right. You just want to keep the rod tip low. And a lot of people make a mistake, have a rod up high, you want it low. You'll feel a tink and you just whack right by your ear. Get them halfway in. The current's coming. From Throw a little bit up current and you let that worm fall. You let that worm fall with the current so it's gonna swim down along the bank and it's gonna do a little hook. And you'll get them on that just as it hooks because it falls, falls, falls. If you throw downstream, it comes straight up. So you throw up and it'll fall right on down in the strike zone. Got a fish on? And I mean, if you find a good spot, when you find a good spot, I mean, you, we just set on them. And you, put the park control motor on whatever but there was a lot of fish in here a lot of fish in here last night but we're dealing with a two and a half foot drop but not the biggest guys in the world but damn man they're good eating nice fish we'll, we'll get some bigger ones later there's some islands in front of us it's some shallow water and it's uh, inside turn the stripers always come up river and they take the inside turn and so for what we're doing in this high water, we need shallow water, we need a little softer water out of the current. And so these islands in front of us are blocking the water. You got fish on up there? These, these islands are blocking the current to the water. And so our, our baits are able to fall at a nice rate the way we like it. And so it's kind of a picture perfect spot for us to get them on this water. How you doing back there, kid? You break off? No. Reese, what time sun come up? Three hours? Yeah, about ten. <laughs> Just keep throwing over there, buddy. <laughs> right. I still see the moon. Yeah, we're moon moon phase. We're fishing the moon phase. I couldn't sleep. You know, it was the perfect timing. I woke up at two o'clock, and I said, oh, "I get another hour." So I got another hour. Got a nice shower in. Made made Justin a nice nice cup of coffee, and you know, Mama was up. Made made a sandwich or two. Mama was up. Yeah, she's up. Rich. What time did you get? What time did you get to bed last night? Uh, I think we went to bed at nine.
hit good, Ryan? Oh yeah, slammed it. Something changed yesterday and started using a swim bait. Everyone else is chucking a black yeah, worm. Yeah, we all have worms on, Ryan. Slipped over and put the swim bait on because we did have a change yesterday. And they really started biting them. Ooh, nice fish. Looks like either a big male or a hen. Nice fish. Hold that up nice and tall, right? Chunky fish. See Let's if it's check a hen. it, see if it's a hen. It's like a small hen. It's a small hen, George. Yep. Yep, small hen, so. Let's go ahead, let see. it go. Let the hens go and spawn. Off she went. Beautiful fish. Good job, Ryan. Thank you. They got a bunch of salmon smoke coming down right now. They let about three million out in Feather River. So these are all coming down the river right now. So I decided to put on a little minnow annotation. Yeah, it did. It worked good. It's got a little paddle, little paddle tail on it, a little vibration, and we've got a little current coming through here. And what happens is those those minnows will come down through the current line and they'll get them. And and you know those smaller fish like that, the stripers, they they're really hard on the uh, the smolt. But your bigger ones, they're hard on the pike minnow. So if you don't have the big ones eating the pike minnows, uh, you're gonna have an explosion of pike minnows that are just gonna demolish our salmon smolt. So the striper and the salmon have coexisted for years. And, and with, without the striper, the, especially the big striper eating the pike minnows, uh, and they're not minnows, they're actually two, three pound fish. And they, you know, and the stripers are bad on them as well, but they're the two or three, four, five pounders like that. So it's real important that they all go together. So we need big striper. I'd like to see a, a slot lemon on striper, uh, let some fish get quite a bit bigger. I, I, you know, For sport, we'd like it more. And then also it would help uh, keep the pike fish down, You know, not the act, actual minnow, but the fish itself, so. Ooh, nice bass, Richie. It's a nice eater right there, Richie. Oh, yeah. Good eater. Right on the black one. George says it'll taste good. Choked it. Yeah, nice one. clean fish. Oh, there he is. Okay. Yep. This is almost like instant replay, huh, Rich? Yeah. You just keep catching them? Oh, he's a clean one. Nice. Got him right? Yeah, I'll get him right. You can just grab the line, pull him in. Nice fish, wonderful fish. Here you go, Richie. Go get us another one. Thank you, brother. Wonderful bass. Good eating. Very good eating. We've got Procure sardine. Here you go, Blake. Put some on yours, too. Fish on. Sandbar we're heading to right here normally pretty productive, so it ought to be good. I mean, we're getting, we're all getting bites. I just put some of that sardine juice on. It ought to get good. Right here, Dave, on that that current. Come on, Big D. Come on, Grandpa. Oh. Two nice keepers right there. Ooh. 
right. Right when you cast it in that, I got whacked. Right when you had that one. I cast right back. There's another one. I, oh. I got three mics right there. Letting that swim bait hit that bottom, and right when you pull it up off the bottom, whack. Welcome back to the Feather River. I'm Justin Wolf. We're with guide Ray Herford, loading the boat with striped bass on artificial lures smeared with Procure Super Gels. We're surrounded by fish at the magic hour of the morning. If you look on the sand, you can see the disturbance of the water. You know, it's perfect. There hasn't been a boat yet out here. So you can actually see the fish, see right there, the fish on. You can see them out here. I'll just stop here. Nice keeper. Oh, there he is. Oh, right there. Oh, that's a good one. They're all good ones. Oh, it's a delicious. Oh, triple, triple. Let's make it a quad. Get in there, guys. Check that one, make sure it's not a hen. Some of these little ones will be female. You don't want them. Another female. Uh -oh. oh, that's a male. Male, hard one. Nice male. Keep them? Yeah, I'll keep that one. You only get two. Yeah, the limit's two, so you're allowed two, and then that's it. So we all always all keep one, and then we fish, and then as we get what we want, then we'll call it a day at the end of the day and keep our two. But yeah, so unbelievable today. I mean, really good fishing. But common. This is common. The water's finally heated up enough where we've been fishing 49, 51, now it's 54 degrees and the fish are really coming alive. What's happening, there's a big sweeping turn there and it's just a hot spot, so we're gonna go right back in there and flip through it again. It should be really good. No boats still yet to come up. Real important for us with artificial and shallow water not to have boat traffic. There you go, good job, Blakey. These, those guys don't have any of this up there. We went with anchovies. Wasn't getting nothing till we put the anchovy on. And now we're catching them. Okay, we've we've caught plenty of fish doing this. I mean, we've you know 20 fish already easy. Uh, we're gonna do some trolling. It's a bigger collision. It's a it's a harder bite, but uh, we're gonna cover a bunch of water and just search things out, look, see what we can't find, and uh, have some fun. It's all about that bite on on the troll. I mean, they hit it as hard as you could ask a fish to hit a lure. So here we go. We're gonna put out feline predators. Uh, 
Ryan, let's go shallow runners, please. Yeah, we're gonna go shallow runners. This is a deep runner, but we'll go with the shallow running pea lines. There's a shorter bill. This one will dive 12, 14 feet deep. We're gonna go to uh, uh, about six, seven feet deep. And that way we can troll faster, cover more water, and the water dropped a lot. So we were doing a little bit better on the, the deep runners last week. And in the last couple days, the water's dropped so much, we're gonna shorten our bill and we should do a lot better on those. Welcome back to the Feather River. I'm Justin Wolf. Limits of perfect size male striped bass have come easy this morning on a variety of artificial lures. Striped bass are excellent eating with a firm, mild white meat that's excellent fried, baked, steamed, or grilled as long as the fish has been kept cold and handled properly. Bleeding the fish immediately after catching is an important step for ending up with the best possible dinner. So we like to bleed our stripers, get all the blood out of the meat. It's got really good white meat. You want no of the blood in there. It's always just pop it behind the gills. I already did this one, of course. So you slide it all the way behind the gills. You come back down and arch it right underneath the gills and it cuts their heart right in half. And bleeds them out nice and good. We've done very well before sunup with plastic worms and swim baits. But now it's time to deploy the pea line predator minnows which is another really fun way to catch striped bass on artificial lures. Go ahead, reel them in, guys. Man, that, that thing, it hit hard. It's not even that big of a fish, but wow. Look at that. And a good bass. We're looking for eight feet of water, eight, eight, ten feet. And you troll super fast, three to five miles an hour. And you just go right along the bushes in these rivers. And, and those lures come by and all of a sudden, man, they just hit they hit it so hard. It's just fantastic. Put a little we like to put a little sauce on ours, uh, whether it's sardine or anchovy, either one works really well, but shallow runners, anything over 11, 12 feet, I go to deep runners, but deep runners, of course, you're gonna go a lot slower. So right now, we're gonna cover this wall, then we'll jump across the other side, I know it's deeper, so then we'll switch our lures to, to deep runners and slow it down and get some that way as well. So. He hammered it. Did he hammer it? Oh, you got the green predator. That's been a hot plug right there. Just keep them in the water, we'll get them off for you. Yeah, this has been a hot color for us. Pea line predator. As you can see, we knocked the eye out of it. But uh, we tip it with a, a tail, and we've been putting uh, chartreuse glow on it, along with your different scent whether you want sardine or anchovy, either one's been working real well, but that's it, and that's a deep runner. That, that lure right there, if you go out about 100 feet, it'll dive around 12, 13 feet, depending on your speed. Downstream, it goes deeper, of course, but it's been a good color. Them little tiny hooks, man. You'd think they'd be too small, but they do the job. Double hook up. Triple, triple. 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 <laughs> 
Come on, Ryan, on the on the real end. We need one on the real end. Mine came off. Oh, yours came off? Well, we had a triple. Well, Dave's got a good one. We're all reeling in. We've caught them on the deep runners. We've caught them on the shallow runners. We caught them swim baits. We caught them on the worms. Now we're going to catch them on the jig. Okay, we have a D line laser minnow, side wash. Change the hook out to a single hook. You can't have over a two ounce lure or one ounce lure, can't be a treble hook. So anything over one ounce has to be single hook. And that's fine, they, they clobber it. So there it is. And we'll definitely put some gel on it. Oh, man, they grab it right there. And they're... Look at that. You can still see some of the gel on it. Nice smell. Get that gel and put it on there. I'm telling you. You guys really need to put gel on there. Oh, re gel it all the time. Hey, thanks for watching today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, there would be no show. So please thank them when you can. Now get out there and do some great fishing.